So you're bored of Windows and you decided you want to try out some Linux distros or distributions for short. Um, basically Ubuntu and any other flavors that you want to try. Cool, I'll show you. So if you're trying out uh, Linux for the first time, I recommend you try Ubuntu. So simply head over to Ubuntu.com and click on Downloads. So you'll get a bunch of different versions for it and since you're most likely running it on your PC, you know, laptop or desktop, uh, I recommend you download the desktop version. The latest one seems to be the 20.04 LTS. The reason why I recommend LTS is because it stands for long term support. So you'll get a lot of um, kind of uh, supported uh, libraries and stuff like that after you download it. So yeah, I recommend you try out the LTS uh, just for the sake of stability and uh, ease of use if you're installing it on your main machine. You'll also need a tool that creates uh, bootable USB drives, you know, something that you can install your Ubuntu operating system in. I recommend a USB drive that at least has 4GB or more memory. So we'll use a tool called Rufus for that. Uh, you can simply head over to rufus.ie, I'll leave these links in the description. It's just a 1MB file, so simply download it, which will help us to create a bootable drive out of it. So while that's being downloaded, you can go ahead and make a partition, basically a place where uh, Ubuntu or any other operating system would sit and uh, you do it basically with the help of uh, disk management so press windows r or uh, bring up the run command as you can see here and uh, type go ahead and type disk management so that's disk mgmt dot msc there it is so this will basically bring up all the uh, disks that are connected to your system and we just want to make a partition with the existing drive that is your uh, hard drive or SSD. So simply click on any one uh, logical drive that has uh, you know some free space in it so you can kind of see it from here. Uh, whichever one you select will have a, a few amount of free space so this thing is 98% free. So I'm just going to click on, right click on it and say shrink volume that will basically give me a option to shrink that volume to a certain extent. So now here you enter the space uh, in MB to shrink. It's one of the weird things of Windows that it doesn't accept directly in GB. So uh, you can simply do that with the help of uh, a calculator really. So how much, how many GB you want, uh, just enter that and multiply it by 1024. So I want say uh, 40 gigabyte for my Ubuntu. So I'm just going to multiply that with uh, 1024. And uh, this will be the amount that I will have to um, allocate. And once you enter that, click on shrink, wait for a while and there it is, a free space. Now we'll install Ubuntu in this free space. You can just leave it as it is and close. So now go to your downloads and uh, launch Rufus. Here it will ask you to select the drive that you want to install this particular operating system which uh, you can now plug in your drive to the system. Make sure to double check which drive you have selected because it will be formatted when you install the uh, disk image. So yeah, this is the right one. By default, it will be a disk or ISO, which is the correct thing. And you can basically browse through your system and select it. So it will format the existing file system into FAT32. If you don't understand what that means, it's fine. So click on start. It will warn you that everything in the uh, collected drive will be erased. So click on yes and just wait. Now based on your operating system's um, boot mode, you can select either ISO or DD. Uh, I recommend you go with uh, DD image mode in case you're running on a UEFI. So this will support both legacy and UEFI boot mode. So I recommend you select this and let's see what happens. Click OK. Now it will write all the data from this ISO file and convert this um, USB drive into a bootable media. So yeah, let's go ahead and install Ubuntu. So first let's shut down Windows. Unplug everything that's uh, connected as a storage unit. The keyboard and mice are fine, but disconnect everything else. Now you have to boot into the USB media that you just created. So basically how you do that is by going into BIOS and uh, changing the boot order. It basically depends on your laptop's type. So you can search online to see what you can do to enter BIOS. And in BIOS you can go into boot and uh, select on the boot mode as legacy if you want. Um, you, can, you can even try with UEFI and see what happens. But I recommend you keep it as legacy. Uh, here is the boot order so you can change it by pressing the plus or minus keys on your keyboard. So make sure that the external device is kept on top or you can directly boot into the uh, USB drive by using uh, boot options. So that's another option. Uh, if I exit this setup, you can press uh, F9 to boot into that particular uh, drive. So that also works. Now good thing about these uh, bootable media is that you don't have to install the operating system. If you want, you can directly start using the OS by keeping the drive itself as a guest mode drive. So you don't have to install anything on the uh, uh, machine's uh, SSD or hard drive. So you can already start using Ubuntu by clicking on this try Ubuntu button. But since we already know that we need Ubuntu, we'll just click on install Ubuntu. 
Now this is a very important step that most of you kind of make a mistake and I myself have made a mistake of clicking this option. So if you click on erase disk and install Ubuntu, it will erase everything on your disk. So it will say here, right? It will delete all of your programs and everything. So this will erase Windows as well. So if you want Windows and Ubuntu in dual boot mode, you do not click this button. So install Ubuntu alongside Windows 10, you can do that or you can click on something else which I recommend because we want Ubuntu be installed in a certain drive that we created, right? We, if you remember, we created a 40 GB partition. So we want uh, Ubuntu to sit on this partition. So we'll click on something else and we'll continue. So now we can select our own manual partition that we just created, which is that uh, 40 GB thing that you see here. So you have to set a root directory since this is a Linux uh, file structure. So double click on the partition and uh, click on the mount point and select as slash. So this will be taken as root, meaning that this will be the main directory where everything else is installed and there it is it automatically created a uh, separate partition for us that's the uh, slash dev slash sda6 it would be useful if you keep this in mind later uh, in case you in case you're wondering where you installed it so we can now install select an appropriate name now it will actually start the installation and this will take some time based on again your uh, hard drive or ssd it will be a little bit faster on ssds but uh, it will take a long time on hard disk drives so just wait there you go it says installation is now complete so in order to click on restart now you first have to unplug the media that you have plugged in here and uh, click on restart now and there it is congratulations you have successfully installed ubuntu alongside windows so if i want i can click on uh, windows uh, partition and easily boot into windows as well and i can shut down to go into ubuntu as well but now your selfish heart is not satisfied. Now you're thinking, what if I want to delete Ubuntu? Okay, fine. I'll show you how to do it. So as usual, I press Windows R and uh, enter Disk Management. Now this 40 GB will still show up as free space, which we know is not true. We just installed uh, Ubuntu on it. And uh, Windows just doesn't know that there is an operating system there. Because Windows is an arrogant piece of crap which only thinks about itself and doesn't even care about other operating systems that might be sharing the same drive. So you can override the existing thing with a new simple volume and then say delete volume. So that will just delete the existing volume itself and now you can simply extend this uh, volume as usual to take up the entire remaining space that we uh, occupied. There it is, it's gone. Now here's a critical step. If you simply close it and uh, shut down your system, the next time you boot up you may get a, a GNU grub screen instead of the uh, Windows boot manager and the reason is Windows uh, Boot Manager doesn't know that you don't have to boot into Grub anymore. You simply boot into Windows. Now, in case you did not delete everything properly and uh, you, let, you were led to this screen, which says uh, Grub Rescue, it's a little bit different than the uh, GNU Grub 2.0, which I covered in my other video. Uh, so this screen, you can actually get into the Ubuntu Grub if it is still there. But in since our case, we deleted the Ubuntu Grub itself, uh, we'll actually take the easy route and uh, simply go ahead with a Windows bootable media. Always have one of these handy. Uh, this thing has Windows 10, which the which is the same OS that we had. So we'll attempt to fix our boot with this. So let's not bother with the commands here. This is an easy way of doing it. So simply plug it into your system and boot into this drive. There it is. So this will basically bring the same installation screen as you've seen earlier, but uh, we don't have to install anything. Uh, we already have Windows here. We'll make use of the existing uh, repair uh, computer option that you see here. So click on repair my computer. It'll bring you a bunch of these things. Uh, click on troubleshoot and uh, we'll have our trusty old command prompt friend here. So we'll try a tool called bootrec. So we'll simply say bootrec slash fix MBR, just like that. Hit enter. So it'll say operation completed successfully. So we are basically fixing the uh, boot with the uh, backup uh, that we have, which is basically stored in the operating system itself. And that's about the only thing you need. It'll easily fix the uh, boot manager mismatch and uh, you should directly be able to boot into Windows without any problems. So yeah, it's going to take some trial and error, but there it is. Eventually it works. So that is how you do it. That is how you install and uninstall Linux in the right way. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you have any further questions, uh, definitely leave them in the comments and uh, I'll answer them. So if I helped you out in any way, leave a like and I'll see you soon. Cheers. Thank you.